In the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saint Doctrine, we're taught that prophets are called of God and will never lead us astray. This allows for a beautiful and unique channel of trust and communication for God's people in order to protect and to bless them. However, it gets complicated because we can look back on what past prophets have said and done incorrectly. This leads us into two contradictory doctrines. Prophets will never lead us astray, and humans can make mistakes. So how do we reconcile these two notions? Let's first briefly look at a few quick examples of when prophets, seers, and revelators were wrong. Harold B. Lee stated, black people were cursed with their skin color because they were unfaithful in the pre-existence. He also taught this of handicapped people. Joseph Fielding Smith stated, we will never get a man into space, and if evolution is true, then the church is false. J. Reuben Clark, speaking to young women, stated that if they dress inappropriately and are assaulted, they should take at least part of the blame themselves. In 2010, President Packer taught in conference that the impure state of homosexuality is not preset, stating, Why would our Heavenly Father do that to anyone? Oakes and Faust also taught this doctrine. But the purpose of this video isn't simply to list all prophetic failures. They've also said many beautiful, hopeful, understanding, inspiring, compassionate words. When we have conquered this, and we will, may we be equally committed to freeing the world from the virus of hunger and free neighborhoods and nations from the virus of poverty. May we hope for schools where students are taught, not terrified they will be shot, and for the gift of personal dignity for every child of God, unmarred by any form of racial, ethnic, or religious prejudice. Though some disagree, prophets are at the very least trying to do good but they're not infallible. Joseph Smith was okay with slavery, but that doesn't make him a bad person because it was culturally accepted at the time. But in this lies the deeper problem. We expect prophets to be on a higher plane of spirituality as they literally communicate with God. Modern prophets don't seem to be on this expected spiritual level. While science and culture move us toward curing illnesses, slowing global warming, advancing the Me Too movement, doing real work to fix the coronavirus problem, the Latter-day Saint Prophet is providing revelation on how sister missionaries can dress, reversing bad policy, making church shorter, asking us to fast to better the COVID-19 situation. Hosanna, Hosanna to God and the Lamb. These trivial and obvious revelations are not on par with a true prophet of God. You see, secularly, we discovered racism was bad. So why didn't God's prophet get there first? We don't really need a prophet to tell us that building smaller temples is a smart choice, or that women should be allowed to pray in church and in conference. Before the prophet said so, modern culture already favored women's rights and accepted homosexuality. Now, I myself followed many of these prophets and their teachings for decades. I had a chance to meet many in person, to shake their hands, to look into their caring eyes. Elder Holland himself told me my prayer during his own conference in Russia was amazing. It was pretty awesome, both the prayer and Elder Holland. They often have beautiful, insightful ideas and perspectives on faith and obedience. We all must deal with adversity. None of us makes it through this life without problems and challenges. No pain that we suffer, no trial that we experience is wasted. Jesus walked such a long, lonely path, utterly alone. We do not have to do so. But they also seem to simply be confined to their cultural perspectives, such as sexual stuff with your partner in bed, marrying someone of a different race, unable to see outside of their ideologies as thick as their glasses. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, though sometimes helpful and inspiring to members, is always years behind. How do you feel about the LDS Church stand on the Equal Rights Amendment? I guess that's their opinion, but they're wrong. The prophet isn't going to say anything any more magnificent than any other enlightened person. I could endlessly list people that are just like President Nielsen, Elder Holland, Hinckley, and Monson, Bernie Sanders, who have done much to change the world through art, music, entertainment, philanthropy, science, politics, and many, many more. Though scripture details marvelous revelations and miraculous events of powerful ancient prophets like Moses, Lehi, and Mormon, 
This doesn't seem to be the case with modern Latter-day Saint prophets today. Little did I know when I promised you at the October 2019 General Conference that this April conference would be memorable and unforgettable. Maybe you don't think that prophets should busy themselves with making decisions about social issues like equal rights or warning us about the coronavirus. Perhaps his concern is our spiritual welfare? Prophets of old, though, seemed to be very focused on helping people avoid calamities and preaching against sin. We definitely have plenty of the preaching against sin. A headstrong, unruly child. What can you do? Ancient prophets warned against natural and man-made disasters. Can you imagine the good it would do if a prophet informed a community regarding an earthquake before it happened? I am glad that the church is involved in the humanitarian response to the coronavirus. But it's clear that he didn't foresee this pandemic, no matter how much we try to spin his words about taking our vitamins. Eat your vitamin pills. <laughs> Get your rest. <laughs> it's going to be exciting. We did have a warning, but it was from philanthropists like Bill Gates. Today, the greatest risk of global catastrophe doesn't look like this. Instead, it looks like this. To the many virologists and scientists, they predicted that this would happen. Russell M. Nielsen can genuinely provide beautiful and comforting advice. I remain optimistic for the future. I know the great and marvelous blessings that God has in store for those who love him and serve him. I love you, I pray for you, and I promise that you will receive comfort and peace as you continue to hear him. Hashtag classic. He is a great president, but not a great prophet. He provided exactly zero discernible prophetic help. Our prophets in this specific instance were those who used science to predict this pandemic. Now, the purpose of this video isn't to just state that cultural shifts in science are always 100% correct. They are susceptible to cultural bias as well. But instead, we need to see that prophets, even though they can sometimes offer good advice in beautiful faith-promoting sermons, don't appear to be speaking to or for God. What they have said in the past is often problematic, completely false, and even damaging to people to the point of member death by suicide, which, by the way, was also taught in the temple pre-1990. So how do we know if what they are saying today will be true in 10 to 20 years from now? Prophets used to teach black people were inferior, that women had to always obey their husbands and not speak up, polygamy was the only way to heaven, and that monogamy was actually evil and would result in the downfall of society. What are prophets then teaching now that will be later disavowed? What rules are you following now that will be later reversed, accepted, or even good? And why should we believe and listen to what current prophets teach if it'll be untrue in the not too distant future? Used or adopt or even sponsor those nicknames ourselves, he is offended. I'm a Mormon. I'm a Mormon. Soy Mormona. Dare to be a Mormon. In short, if prophets are as susceptible to cultural bias as everyone else, we don't need a prophet. Perhaps it's time we start to think for ourselves and trust in systems that are less influenced by ideology and maintaining power. Now, if you're a believing Mormon at this point, the two of you that made it through this video, you may be experiencing some uncomfortable feelings. This is called cognitive dissonance. It's when evidence or ideas challenge our deeply held beliefs. It's not the Holy Ghost departing, it's not Satan or evil spirits, but rather a normal human experience. Follow the links in the description down below to the CES letter or letter for my wife, where in both documents lay out other important problems and subscribe for future video topics. Feel free to respond in support or against the claims in the comment section down below.